Hello everyone. A very important concept to understand when we're reading the scriptures is what it means for Jesus to sit at the right hand of God. When God raised Jesus from the dead, he seated Jesus at his right hand, the right hand of the throne of God. In the scriptures, the word throne simply pl implies authority. And the authority that it implies is the authority that that throne represents. So if it's the throne of Israel, it refers to the authority of the king of Israel. Jesus sat down on the throne of God. He who overcomes, I will grant to him to sit down with me on my throne, just as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. Revelation 3.21 So what Jesus means there is that he has sat down um, on the throne of God in the sense that he has been given God's authority to rule. He rules with the authority that God himself rules, the authority that his God ruled. He has been given that authority. So when he says, I sat down with my father on his throne, the idea isn't that, you know, he displaced the father and sat in on his chair. The idea is that he has been given his father's authority to rule. It's very important to understand what it means to sit at the right hand of God. God raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenlies, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion or lordship, literally, and every name that is named, Ephesians 1, 20 to 21. So to sit at God's right hand means you are far above all rule and authority and power and lordship. Your authority, if you sit at God's right hand, means that you're far above all this other authority. All rule, authority, power, lordship, and every name that is named. If you sit on God's throne, that's what your authority is. And that's what the scriptures are saying. Jesus Christ, who is at the right hand of God, having gone into heaven, angels and authorities and powers having been subjected to him. 1 Peter 3.21 So Jesus had all things placed under his feet, including angels, including angels. The man Jesus was exalted to the throne of God, and he became in this way superior to the angels, because he was, in, he was exalted to a position that is higher than the angels with respect to authority. Having made purification of sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Having become so much superior to the angels as he has inherited a more excellent name than them. Hebrews 1, 3 to 4. The man Jesus became superior to the angels. God anointed him to be above the angels. Hebrews 1, 9. No angel has ever sat on God's throne. The word throne signifies authority. In other words, no angel has ever had such authority as the man Jesus does. And for that reason, all the angels of God must bow down to this risen man, Jesus of Nazareth. And that's why Jesus said, all authority, all authority in heaven... And upon the earth has been given to me, Matthew 28, 18, all authority in heaven. That means all authority. There isn't anything that has not been placed under Jesus' feet, the man Jesus, who God raised from the dead. 
And that's why we read this. But we do see him who was made a little lower than the angels, namely Jesus, because of the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, so that by the grace of God he might taste death, death for everyone. A man who had suffered was crowned with glory and honor, for he did not subject to angels the world to come, or the oikumene to come, concerning which we are speaking, but one has testified somewhere saying, what is man that you remember him? See what he's saying? It was not to angels that the world to come has been subjected. It was to a man. What is man that you remember him, or the son of man that you were concerned about him? You made him a little lower than the angels, Jesus who suffered. You have crowned him with glory and honor, and have appointed him over the works of your hands. You have put all things, including the angels, in subjection under his feet. For in subjecting all things to him, he left nothing that is not subject to him, including the angels. A man who had suffered was crowned with glory and honor. Because of the suffering of death, he was crowned with glory and honor. He, Because he sits on the throne of God, and he is exercising his God's authority, he must be honored as God is honored. Revelation 5, and they sang a new song, a new song, not an old song, a new song, saying, Worthy are you to take the book and to break its seals, for you were slain, he overcame, and purchased for God with your blood men from every tribe and tongue and people and nation. You have made them to be kings and priests to our God, and they will reign upon the earth. Then I looked, and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, and the living creatures and the elders, and the number of them was myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain, a slain man, to receive power and riches and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. And every created thing which is in heaven and on the earth, and under the earth and on the sea, and all the things in them I heard them saying, To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honor and glory and dominion forever and ever. A man sits on God's throne. One of the most amazing announcements, and I think the most amazing, astonishing announcement ever made to us in the history of the world is when Peter stood up on the day of Pentecost. He not only announced that God had raised a man from the dead, he announced a man was in charge of all creation. A man was running the universe. Peter begins telling the story this way. Men of Israel, listen to these words. Jesus, the Nazarene, a man attested to you by God with miracles and wonders and signs which God did through him in your midst just as you yourselves know. This man delivered over by the predetermined plan and foreknowledge of God you nailed to a cross by the hands of godless men and put him to death, but God raised him up again. He's going to tell us the story about a man. And then he goes on to say, Brethren, I may confidently say to you regarding our forefather David that he both died and was buried and his tomb is with us to this day. And so because he was a prophet, David, and knew that God had sworn to him an oath to seat, or a promise to seat, one of his descendants on his throne. 
He looked forward, ahead, and spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, David's son, that he was neither abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh suffer corruption. This Jesus, this man, God raised up again, to which we are all witnesses. Therefore, having been exalted to the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured forth this which you both see and hear. For it was not David who ascended into heaven, but he himself, David, says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand, until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore let all the house of Israel know for certain that God has made him, this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Do you hear what he's saying there? If you were an ancient Jew and you were hearing this message, you didn't even really need to hear Peter's con concluding statement. You would have understood what Peter meant when he said that Jesus had been exalted to the right hand of God. They would have known immediately what that meant. God had made him Lord. Peter didn't even really need to say it. They would have known that God had put a man in charge of creation. He had authority over all creation. He had authority in heaven and on the earth, just as Jesus says at Matthew 28, 18. Psalm 110.1 1 is, I think, the most quoted Old Testament verse in the New Testament. The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand. And Jesus asks the Pharisees something like a riddle. And he says, well, you know, they ask him who the Christ is, David's son. And Jesus says, well, he's, you know, how could he say the Lord said to my Lord? How could David call his own son Lord? Peter explains it right here. This psalm was fulfilled when Jesus rose from the dead and God made him Lord. The Lord God said to the Lord Jesus, Sit at my right hand. God made Jesus Lord. It's mind-boggling if you think about it. If you were a Jew standing there on that day and you heard this message, it would have been a mind-blowing message to hear that God had not only raised a man from the dead, he put this man in charge of absolutely everything. Everything except God himself. He put him in charge of the entire universe, all creation. A man. Mind-boggling. And that was Peter's message on this day. And so we read things like this. For this reason also God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. So that the name of Jesus every knee will bow of those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and that every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That's the name above every name. He is Lord of everything. Everything. God raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenlies far above all rule and authority and power and lordship and every name that is named. God made him Lord, Lord of everything. For he did not subject to angels the world to come concerning which we are speaking, but one has testified somewhere saying, What is man that you remember him? He has subjected the world to come to a man, a man, not to angels, but to a man. Do you see his point there at Hebrews 2, 5, and 6? There are men who cannot bear to hear this, men who are led by the spirit of the Antichrist. Acts 7, but being full of the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed intently into heaven, and he saw the glory of God. 
and Jesus standing at the right hand, the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens opened up, and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Man, a man at the right hand of God. But they cried out with a loud voice, and they covered their ears, and they rushed at him with one impulse or one accord, and they killed him, stoning him to death. The first Christian martyr was killed by men guided by the spirit of Antichrist. Man who could not bear to hear that God had placed a man on his throne, that a man had been given all the authority that their own God had. But Stephen testified to the truth, and in their deceived minds, they thought Stephen was blaspheming God by saying a man sat on God's throne, meaning he ruled just as God rules. They couldn't bear to hear that a man not only ruled over the nations, he ruled over them, and they knew very well that sitting on God's throne also meant he was seated in a position of authority above the angels and ruled over the angels. For them, only God. Only God could be there, ruling over the angels and over creation. Only God could be in charge of the universe. They covered their ears. But Stephen was telling them otherwise, and he was telling them the truth. They could not bear to hear it, so they covered their ears and killed the first Christian martyr and the second of God's children, the man Jesus, God's son, being the first of their victims, those led by the spirit of the Antichrist. God has exalted a man to his throne, the man Jesus. To sit on God's throne means a man has been given all God's authority to rule. A man has been given authority to rule over the nations of the world. A man has been given authority to rule over every created thing. A man has been given authority to rule all of creation. A man has been given authority to rule even over the angels because God seated him at his right hand, far above all rule and authority and every other name that is named. God had made him Lord, this man Jesus, who they had crucified. God had made this man superior to the angels in his positional authority. They were subjected, the angels were subjected to the man Jesus because he was seated at God's right hand, far above all rule, all authority, all dominion. God had given this man the name that is above every name. He is Lord. All the angels must bow down to this man. With respect to authority, a man was given God's authority. A man. A man is running the universe. God has placed a man in charge. A man. And we must bow down to him. Because he has a name that is above every name. He has all authority in heaven and earth. He is Lord, this man that was crucified, Jesus. God bless you.